Hello, welcome to the first recorded problem solving session for Physics 482, General Relativity. So, uh, I will be solving two problems from Hartle, uh, problems 5, 6 and 5, 7. Uh, they are related to each other, so I will be solving them together in this session. Uh, obviously, there is no room for interaction because I recorded session, but if you have questions about my solution, uh, any comments, any feedback, which I would greatly appreciate, uh, you can post them in the forum. Uh, when I edit the video, I will try to post the questions at the beginning of this video, but uh, that's not a priority for me and I don't know how to do it. So for the time being, I'll refer you to the book. So these are problems 6 and 7 from chapter 5. So uh, in problem 5-6, we are given that uh, the we have a particle that's moving along the x-axis uh, with some time dependency. The x by dt is g times t divided by square root of 1 plus g squared t squared. All right, so this verse is a function of time. Given where g is a constant. Uh, so in part a, they're asking, will the particle's speed ever exceed the speed of light? Uh, the answer is no it's not going to exceed the speed of light. Uh, this can be seen uh, easily, so this expression gt1 plus g square t square the square root uh, goes to as t tends to infinity. Uh, this is going to tend to something like gt by gt plus some small number, gt plus epsilon, let's call this, and obviously this is less than 1, so the particle never exceeds, uh, the particle speed never exceeds the speed of light. Now for part B, they're asking calculate the components of particles for velocity. Now for this, uh, we can just use the expression for for velocity. So we can look this up from the book. So this is the time component, it's just gamma factor, and this is the space component, it's just gamma times the, the three velocity of the particle. So in this case, this is going to be something like gamma the x zero zero right the particle is moving along the x-axis there are no y or z components of the velocity so we can calculate these numbers uh, so for example gamma is going to be so this is one over uh, one minus v squared right? so this is one over let's call this like this one minus uh, g squared t square by 1 plus g squared t square to a half. We move this over here, we get 1 plus g squared t square minus g squared t square by 1 plus g squared t square over here and square root over here. So these go away obviously and we get square root of 1 plus g squared t square. One. Uh, for the other one, for gamma times v, well, uh, this is just uh, the denominator of v, so we just get gt. Right. So you multiply this by this, this is just your vx, obviously, and the denominator cancels, you get uh, g times t. Okay, now, for part c, Express x and t as function of proper time along the trajectory. So x as a function of proper time and t as a function of proper time. What are these? Now, uh, we have the four velocity. And four velocity is, of course, uh, the derivative of four position with respect to proper time. Right? And the first component of four position is time. The second component of four position is well, x component. Right. So we can write that. Uh, so the first component of four velocity is gamma. So gamma is equal to dt by d tau, and <coughs> x. Uh, sorry, gamma times v is going to be equal to dx by d tau. So we have these two uh, differential equations for t and x, and we have these expressions, right? We calculated them over here, so gamma is this expression here, gamma times v is just g times t. 
uh, we can solve them. So let's write this down. This is g times t. This is something more complicated. So this involves t. So if you first solve this, then we can substitute here and resolve that one. So let's start with that one. So 1 plus g squared t squared to a half is equal to dt by b tau. Now we can take this, b tau is equal to uh, dt by 1 plus g square t square to a half. Right? And well, uh, the left hand side depends only on tau, the right hand side only t, so we can solve this differential equation by direct integration. So let's do that from 0 to tau. B tau prime is going to be from 0 to t. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The t prime by 1 plus uh, g square t prime square to a half. Right? So I made the choice that t uh, equals 0 corresponds to tau equals 0. Right? So I, that is a differential equation. Uh, what we are given here. The differential equation to get the solution, we need to make uh, we make some we need to make some assumption about the boundary condition. So this is just tau, of course, All right? And this you can look this up. But this is uh, some uh, inverse hyperbolic function. Uh, you can do it by Mathematica. You can look it up. You can make the substitution. But I already did this, so the answer is arc sine hyperbolic gt by g. Right? That's the answer that comes off. Then you take the sine, you move g over here, you take sine hyperbolic of both sides. g tau is going to be gt. So t is 1 over g sine hyperbolic of g tau. Now we can substitute this, we can take this and we can put this in here. So dx by d tau g's cancel, I only get sine hyperbolic g tau. Again, I need to choose some uh, boundary conditions. It uh, doesn't really matter, but uh, this can be integrated. right? So bx uh, is equal to sine hyperbolic g tau, d tau. So from some x0 to some x, dx prime is going to be from say 0 to some tau, sine hyperbolic g tau, uh, <coughs> excuse me, g tau prime, d tau prime, and this is going to be just x minus x naught, and this is going to be cosine hyperbolic of g tau minus uh, 0, cosine hyperbolic is 1. Right? So we have our uh, our formula for x is a function of proper time. This could, of course, be set to zero, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Now for part D, what we have is what are the components of the four force and the three force acting on the particle? Well, uh, this is kind of trivial. So the four force is m times the four acceleration, which is m times the second derivative of the position, or equivalently, m times the first derivative of the four velocity with respect to proper time. Sorry, this is not alpha, this is square. Well, let's erase this, because I'm going to scan these uh, and make them available to you later. Uh, and you can take the integral, it's, uh, it's not going to be... Uh, it's not going to pose any difficulty. Uh, and there's a relation between the three force and the four force. And from that, you can calculate the three force as well. All right, so this is for the uh, five, six. Let's go to question five, seven, which is actually a challenging problem. Uh, it's marked with a C in the book. Uh, so we have a particle that's moving along the x-axis. It's uniformly accelerated in the sense that the acceleration measured in its instantaneous rest frame is always g, which is a constant, 
Find x and t as a function of proper time tau, assuming the particle passes through x0 at time t equals 0 with 0 velocity. Draw the world line of the particle in a space-time diagram. Okay, so, uh, as you know, the, the solution manual for the book is available. Actually, by the time I post the video, I also plan to post the solution manual to the to the class as well. Um, so, the solution, the solution the solution manual is very nice, uh, but I'm going to try to develop something a little bit different. Uh, so, you'll actually, I want to expose you to some technique uh, that that's in my opinion a bit more intuitive so it's not I mean the, the solution the solution manual is not wrong uh, I like it very much it's very elegant it is how you should solve this problem if you can but if you can't then uh, the way I'm going to show here hopefully is going to be more intuitive for you so you can get a feeling of uh, solving it this way and then uh, perhaps you will get more comfortable solving the problem using the method in the solution manual. All right, so uh, I'm going to calculate the transformation of the acceleration. So we have the transformation of the position and velocity, the Lorentz transformations. I'm going to calculate the transformation of acceleration. So I'm going to have two reference frames. So there's some reference frame O, X, Y, and C, and another reference frame O prime with x prime, y prime, z prime. So these reference frames are in the standard configuration in the sense that their axes are parallel to each other and their origins <coughs> coincide at t equals t0. Uh, so I'm going to say that this O prime is the instantaneous rest frame instantaneous rest frame of particle of the particle, particle at t equals t zero. Right, so it's O prime is moving with some speed v with respect to uh, O, and our particle is accelerating at some constant acceleration. At some point, it's going to assume this uh, speed v along the x-axis, and so at that instant, this is going to be the instantaneous rest frame of the particle. Right? So I'm going to be using, you know, capital letters uh, for velocities of particles, so of particles in particles in reference frames, and V for the speeds of reference frames with respect to each other. Right? This is the convention that's used in the book, and uh, I'll try to use it here. I'll try to exploit this here to make it more understandable what I'm doing. Right. Uh, so, because O is the, O prime is the instantaneous test frame of the particle at t equals t0, at t equals t0, Vx is going to be V. Right, so it's moving with this velocity, uh, this speed at t equals t0. Now, after uh, some infinitesimal time dt prime passes uh, the particle is going to have some velocity uh, is going to have some velocity in this reference frame so remember this reference frame is moving with constant speed so only at this instant t equals t0 it is the instantaneous rest frame right it's not following the particle it's not accelerating the particle itself is accelerating so only at this instant it's going to have zero velocity in this reference frame after some time passes, after some dt prime passes, it is going to have some velocity. After dt prime, uh, say, elapses, the particle is going to have the speed, or the infinitesimal speed, maybe I should say, uh, d dx prime, which is a times dt prime in O prime. Right? So this much time passes, its acceleration is A, well, G, whatever, uh, it's going to have this much velocity, right? So just because its acceleration is A in this reference frame doesn't mean its acceleration is going to be O in the other reference frames. This will be correct for Gaudian transformations, it's not necessarily correct for the Lorentz transformations, but this I can write. Right? So it starts from zero velocity and it has some acceleration. By definition of acceleration, it's going to have this much velocity in that reference frame. 
All right, but if it is, uh, it has this much velocity in the reference frame, so its velocity, velocity uh, in, sorry, in all is given by the velocity transformation or the velocity addition formula. So Vx is going to be d vx prime plus v over 1 plus d vx prime v, where of course I'm using c equals 1 units, and uh, this is going to be what? Uh, this is going to be like vx plus d vx, right? So I know that the left hand side and the right hand side uh, are not really compatible, but so this is v vx at not uh, at t0 but some after some time uh, after dt prime uh, elapses right so uh, just forget about this this is this is what I want to write right it's going to gain some additional velocity in reference frame O as well and it's going to be given by this right just the velocity addition formula now I can write this I can calculate this right uh, to first order in the differentials so this is going to be then V plus D Vx prime and first order in differentials this is going to be 1 minus V times D Vx prime and I can multiply and just throw out the cross term this is going to be V plus 1 minus V square times D Vx prime <coughs> okay so this part is uh, going to be uh, what, what, what we call uh, the the, ch the change uh, in the in the velocity. So this I can write by but by, by recognizing that this differential change is just a times dt v plus one minus e square uh, square a dt prime. Okay. Now I want to write everything in my O reference frame, but this is in the prime reference frame, in O prime reference frame. So what I want to do here is to express uh, t, uh, yeah, dt in terms of dt prime. Now, how do I do this? Well, I have to take a small break here and I will come back uh, after this break.